Alright, what we're looking at today is complementary angles, uh, supplementary coterminal angles. Before we get to that, just want a quick reminder of uh, our degrees here and what uh, it means in terms of radians. Remember, a full time around is 2 pi radians, meaning half of that is only pi radians, which means half of that would be half a pi, pi over 2 radians. Now, what we want to start with is, let's say that we have an angle that is 71 degrees. What quadrant would that lie in? Well, 71 is between 0 and 90. That means that should be in here in quadrant 1. Next one is negative 120. Well, 120 would be in quadrant 2, but because it's negative, we need to go that same distance in the other direction. So this is going to put us in quadrant 3. 400 degrees. Well, if I went the whole way around for 360, I still need to go another 40 degrees. So 400 would actually appear in quadrant 1 at the same place as 40 degrees. Now, we get to the radians, it should be a little bit trickier. The way I look at this for pi over 3 is pi over 3, is that more or less than pi? Well, it's less than pi, so it means it needs to be either in quadrants 1 or 2. Now, pi over 3 is also less than pi over 2, so that means it needs to be up here somewhere in quadrant 1. For 8 pi over 5, it's more than pi. How much more than pi? Is it more than 3 pi over 2? Yes, it is, so it's going to put me in quadrant 4. Negative 2 thirds pi. Well, I'm going to go this direction. It is less than a full pi, so I'm not going to go all the way up into quadrants 2 or 1. I'm going to stay down in 3 and 4. 2 thirds is more than the half pi it would take to get to here, so it should be here in quadrant 3. All right, and this last one, 3 pi over 2. Well, that actually is the 270 mark exactly, going down between quadrants 3 and 4. So really, it's not in any quadrant but we're going to say that it technically is the barrier between 3 and 4. So it's not in any quadrant, but it's technically um, the barrier between those two. Now, what we also talked about, coterminal angles. Let's figure out how we can actually find these. Coterminal angles, we said, or if it went to one spot, but then maybe it could go around multiple times other than that, as long as you end at the same spot. The way you find coterminal angles, we said, is all you have to do is add 360 degrees to it for an extra rotation. So one example here would be 410, that is a coterminal angle. Now another option, a lot of times you want two different ones, one that's positive and one that's negative. Well, instead of going around an extra time this way, let's go backwards by a, a full rotation. So minus 360 degrees. So negative 310 is also a coterminal angle. I can do the same with this. If I add 360, I'm at negative 40 degrees. Well, there's my negative. How can I get a positive? If I subtract, it will still be negative. Well, I can keep adding 360 as much as I want to get more uh, angles until I get one that's positive. If I add 360 again, then I'll get a positive 320 for an angle. Now, for radians, all we're going to do, we need to add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi because we said that 2 pi is what is equivalent in radians as 360 is to, uh, to degrees. So for this, for 3 pi over 4, if I want to add 2 pi, we need to make common denominator, so that denominator would be 4, meaning this would become 8, giving me 11 pi over 4 as my, uh, excuse me, as my coterminal angle. I can also do the same instead of adding. Let's say I did the same thing but subtracted. That means I would get negative 5 pi over 4. I can do the same with this if I add 2 pi to it. Uh, common denominator is 6, making that 12. So I would have 17 pi over 6 when I add. And when I subtract, if I subtracted this instead, it would be then negative 7 pi over 6 as my coterminal angles. Now, the last thing we want to do is talk about complementary and supplementary angles. When we did it with degrees, complementary adds to 90, supplementary adds to 180. Same idea when we do radians, except it's adding to pi over 2 and pi. So what we're going to do here, for complementary, um, all we need to do, what does it take to get that to 90 degrees? Well, just 15 degrees. If you need to do it with subtraction, it would be 90 minus 75 would give you 15. For supplementary, it's 105 degrees, or 180 minus 75 equals 105. Either, if you can just recognize it, or if you want to do the subtraction, that's fine. Now, for 124, uh, supplementary angle, let's do that first. That's easy. It's going to be at 56 degrees. Complementary, well, it's already more than 90. Well, it could be, I guess, negative 34 degrees, but we don't want to look at negative numbers. We're going to say that there really is no complementary angle because it's already an obtuse angle. 
Now, when I go over here to the uh, radian mode, same sort of idea, except now we need to add pi over 2 and pi, or get it to pi over 2 and get it to pi, I should say. I think supplementary is easy because to get from 3 eighths of a pi, how do I finish the pi? I would need to add 5 more eighths of a pi. Same down here, if I already have 1 7th of a pi, I would need to add another 6 7ths of that pi. Now, to get to a half, um, the way I do this and the way you can do it for supplementary as well, for complementary, let's start up here. To get to, we need to get pi over 2. I'm just going to subtract the angle I already had. Get a common denominator, so to make this 8, I need to multiply by 4. So 4 pi minus 3 pi leaves me just a single pi over 8. Same thing down here. I need to get to pi over 2 from pi over 7. To get a common denominator, this is now going to be pi over four, something over 14 and 14. I multiplied this guy by 2 to get there, and this guy by, whoops, did I do that right? This should be multiplying this one by 7, and then multiplying this one by 2. So 7 pi minus 2 pi, which will give me a 5 pi over 14. So that's how you find your uh, complementary, supplementary, and co-terminal angles.